So call to order the June 13th, Monday, June the 13th, 2022, select board meeting for Barrington. Uh, roll call attendance. Kosha here. Bailey here. Manshrek here. Uh, <clears throat> Will you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right. Review of the agenda. I think there are some changes that have been proposed. I'd like to address. Um, Go ahead, you have it. I have a couple if you would entertain me. First, uh, I'd like to add unlicensed dog list and FEMA grant to the consent agenda Excuse as me. letters M and N. Sorry. There's there's no sound, there's no speaker. Just well, you'd have to raise your voice a little. I'll, I'll continue to speak up. Sure thing, absolutely. So uh, the unlicensed dog list, I had sent details uh, every year. This is a statutory requirement of the town clerk. Uh, the FEMA grant, this is a $145,000 grant for the Emergency Operations Center of the new town hall. So I'd like to add those to the consent agenda along with an administrative abatement for map 111 lots 10 and 11. Um, I sent some details about that previously as well. Uh, there was a request to remove library bench and winter maintenance from the consent agenda. So we'll put that under new business as letter C. And finally, I talked to the chair and looking ahead to June 27th, uh, we'd like to add under new business as D uh, to cancel the June 27th, 2022 meeting. We can talk about that more under new business. I'd like to move the motion. Motion to move. Uh, request. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Um, very good. Um, public comment. There are uh, 15 minutes of public comment. There will be a repeat later. Each person is allowed three minutes. Uh, and we will listen to your comments. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Robert Russell, 99 Toland Road. Thank you. Um, this isn't so much of a public comment as I'm submitting a warrant article to the town. I have 178 signatures. This is not public comment. Yes, sir. It is. Per state RSA, I'm submitting a warrant article to the town. Good. 178 of your constituents have signed this. So I would like to submit this to you. Okay, I'll take it. Now, I have a question, Dan. When I told you I was doing this, you called me up and you said that you didn't think I would get 50 signatures. I don't think I said that. You said that on the phone. I said you need to get. And to the press, you, you also had told the press that per the town attorney, the same attorney that did the failed and frivolous lawsuit against my business, that this was only an advisory vote. I want to ask a question. Are you are you trying to suppress voters to make them think it's a throwaway vote? No, that just happens to be a fact. <clears throat> so, so thank you very much. You are for the will of the people, correct? Point of order, uh, Mr. Mr. Sir, Chairman. Point of order. A very simple question. This, Point, I, you're you're interrupting will of the people. Are you going to present your opinion or are you going to have public comment? Because have the Democrats public. are all for the popular vote, right? Yes. OK, so I'm asking you a simple question. Are okay. you for the will of the people? I believe, I believe you're interrupting this meeting. This is supposed to be public comment. You want to present your opinion? Yeah. I've been over 500 homes in this town. And imagine 178 of your constituents right now standing in front of you. Thank this you. It's not just me. OK, thank you, sir. If you'll present your, your petition. You Bill, Are you for the will of the people? Yes, we're going to submit. That was a your, yes. Thank you. You come up, Emily. May I approach? You come. Bring it on. Okay. These are originals. I have marked each sheet, one of 20, two of 20, because there's 20 sheets. Okay. I've also initialed each sheet. Can you come over here? Okay, this is a very sensitive document. Right? It's a page one of 20. This is page two of 20. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. These are supposed to be 
presented to the clerk. That's yes. not per the state law. It says to the chairman of the board. Okay, you're presenting it. I'll take it. No, I don't trust you, sir. Thank you this for that comment. This is page five of 20. Thank you, sir. We'll give this to the supervisor of the checklist. She'll determine the validity of the signatures. Okay, the last thing. No. The Barrington Board of Selectmen, at this time, I am formally requesting to be on the agenda for the board, the board of Selectmen meeting. I had stated on the sheet on Monday, June 27th, what is the next Board of Selectmen meeting? Because you just stated that this one was canceled. What is the date of the that next? Is, that has not been voted on yet. Yeah, we haven't decided that. We got to. You no, know, it's on the calendar. To be discussed. And we choose to cancel. We may vote to cancel it. Thank you. No, no. What is the one after June 27th? We haven't decided. Okay, I'm going to continue this. I'm formally requested to be on the agenda for the Board of Selectmen meeting on Monday, June 27, 2022 at 630 p.m. This is to address concerns regarding town officials not responding to questions that they pledged to answer appropriately during a recorded public session on 11 April Sir. 2022, where I addressed the board. Sir, your three minutes are up. About Thank you. Regarding the failed lawsuit and frivolous name is lawsuit against my name and address, sir. Bay Tactical. Not only have these public sir, officials, okay. town administrator Please, Connor McIver and board of selectmen chairman Dan and Thanks, George, Bailey, and I live failed to provide Check adequate the answers, the but they have Thank failed you. to respond in any request to the great majority of the questions I have asked. Further, I wish to address the serious issues about the town's investigation into the allegations I have brought forward. As a registered voter in the town of Barrington, I form part of the legislative body of the town government. With these two officials ignoring my outright questions, this forces me to ask these questions as part of an agenda in a public session. Thank you, these sir. Public servants Comments. outright ignore my request. This brings up potential constitutional issues where I can only seek relief in a public session. What is the next date after Monday, June 27th? What is the not on date? Not determined yet. Um, are there any other? And I'm not walking away. What is the next date? <clears throat> Mr. Ayer. Dan. I, I just gave you the answer. Dan, what is the following date? Mr. My name's Daniel. Dan. He, yeah. Dan, I'm what here is, not to grandstand. Dan, I'm here to make my public speech. And what is the next date? I said I am not requesting to be on the agenda. I'm Will you put on the agenda? No. Not. And you can. Yes, I can. This is my constitutional right. You have you have ignored all my emails. In fact, you haven't even responded. I haven't even received your emails, Mr. Ayers. That's not true, Mr. Ayers. That is not true. I have sent all these emails to you and Connor, and you have not even hit reply. You are lying. Mr. You are. Why don't you say port of sir? Your time. Excuse me. Your Mr. time Chairman. is up. I am time is up. Thing to be on the agenda for the next. There's another public meeting. comment in the meeting. I am asking you, and you have not agenda procedure for the next board of select. Do you understand this is a if you would like to speak again? You may request it at the second. second I am requesting it at no, the second. I'm no, you just you have three minutes. You're not, you're not listening. Not yes, I am listening. You have to let me be on the agenda. This is a mere formality, Dan. 
No, I don't have to let you on the agenda. And this is a cover up. Dan, you are covering up. There is. You just stated you did not get my emails. That's correct. You did not get a single one of them. I, the ones I got, I responded to. I you absolutely did not respond to them. So these are part of public record. Uh, it, and you are saying in front of all these people, in front of your constituents, you are saying you did not receive these emails, the ones I'm talking about. I don't know which ones you're talking about, the ones I've received. I'm talking about all the ones you ignored. I believe it's 10 emails over two and a half months, sir. Dan, I, I haven't need, received any. If you believe in transparency, you will put me on the agenda. You obviously do not believe in transparency. Cannot not, put you on the. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Please explain. in this meeting. Yes, Mr. You, Harris. First, Mr. Harris now has the floor. Your time has expired for you to speak. That's being an agenda. Place me on the you. agenda. And then the second part is you've asked to be on the agenda. We have not made a decision. He said no. He did make a decision. He, George, excuse me. You're George, talking. The chairman you of the are board. talking to me. Dan, that is not the George. Question that was George. Thank you very much, George. The chairman. What I am board. saying to you, sir. No, sir. What I am. Hey, Jim. Do you want to say something? You because you guys never speak up. Not yeah. running this meeting. Your time there, is up. Please. You are being obnoxious, and we don't need to have you here doing that. You are dismissed. I'm the one being obnoxious. You are dismissed, sir. I'm yes. the one. Sir, you are dismissed. I came here. You are dismissed. 78. You are dismissed. Thank you. You're, you're making Thank a good you for your show. Comments. You, you presented your. Dismissed. You presented this as. Stand please make the phone call. You not place me on the agenda. Is that correct? I didn't say that. I. Would. You said no. I said. You said no. Decide. There's no agenda. He stated no. I think he said he doesn't have. Let me yeah. remind everybody: if you're going to speak here, you have to be a resident or a taxpayer of this town for other pieces of property. All right, Mr. Ayers. Thank you. This is my report. It's in writing. Please give it to the clerk. Yeah. I just want to state I'm running for selectmen, and you guys need to get ready for some change. OK, we're going to clean this town up. Sir, we don't need threats. Please sit down. And you need to start responding to my emails. And Please so sit did. down, sir. You a threat, I, a threat to run for office. And listen to you. A threat to run for Chief, office. Chief, would you take care of this for us, please? We're having a disturbance, and he won't settle down. Please. Threat yeah. by somebody that wants to run for office. Three minutes are up. I'm, I'm trying to get my public comment. God, I'm a taxpayer here. Can you please recognize that too? Okay, <laughs> Mr. Ayer. My name is Daniel E. Ayer. I live at 330 Old Concord Turnpike. I am a former select person. I ran the people's voice. And so I heard many complaints. I've heard them all. And so this is a sad day for me. I'm here for my public comment. I'll do three minutes and that's it. My personal thoughts and feelings as a taxpayer. The tax, the town has enabled to, to a tackle and rob Russell. It's sad to hear he wants more of taxpayers money. Code enforcement, code enforcement informed the business was in violation of town ordinance and was told the steps to correct them by going to the ZBA. He admitted he was looking for a, find a bigger and better location. John Hawkins gave him on our taxpaying dollar a list of properties and other buildings available. The road agent installed four loads of gravel, plus or minus in a right of way for parking at 99 Tolan Road. The police chief waived the parking ordinance and the right of way. Driveway permits are allowed for access to a certain point in a right of way. Not the whole property line. And there's no parking on the causeway or roads with other without the consent of the select board or its agent. There's 160 miles of private roads in this town. I'm sure other taxpayers would love to have four loads of gravel installed for free. Any contract to putting up orange cones at a right of way has to post signs on the cones in the right of way for the purpose. You just can't put leave on the side of the road. The town finally enforced the ordinance after a long time as the business grew and added more employees and containers. Courts inform courts will inform anyone they have to exhaust all local town steps. And one of them is go to the ZBA. If that needs to be appealed, the case. Once that is done, the courts will hear the case. 
Why are we having a special town meeting at the taxpayer's expense when it should be held in a court of law? Anyone who's collecting a state retirement, government pension, and running a full time business complains about money in the day of age, I don't understand. The stock market's falling. 401 retirement plans are dropping the cost, dropping. Cost of living, fuel, food, and supply chain have a, have a complaint. A time of the year, people are paying their property tax and trying to budget money to stay alive the rest of the year. I've heard it all, I've seen it all. Town enabled this situation. If you guys don't see that, I only had one vote. I spoke my mind. I had personal persecution against me, death threats, everything. Now I'm having health issues here going on. I don't know how much longer I got. You know what? I'm still here to make a stand. And what this is a shame I saw you earlier. I think my three minutes is up. And that's all I'm allowed. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Thank you, Mr. Any other public comment? Mr. Vasco. Um, I just wanted to give you. Let me have your name and address, yeah. please. Yeah. Um, my name is Cassandra Levesque at 24 Emerald Drive, Barrington. Um, I just wanted to give you all an update. I gave Connor a copy of all the committee conference reports on all the bills. Um, and also at Stratford County, they are looking to upgrade some of their buildings, uh, the jail and some of the other places. They also have a future plan to help with the housing crisis we have here in New Hampshire and especially in the Seacoast. Uh, that would be to add apartment complexes onto like strip malls so that way they can help those local businesses and um, help make sure that people can get affordable housing here in the Seacoast area. Um, so if you have any questions, I will then Thank you very much. I appreciate everything you've done for us. But I have a question. Uh, I'm starting a strip mall. Mm -hmm. Right now, presently, we have some towns that have businesses downstairs in the main street, and they have uh, business slash uh, uh, apartments available upstairs. Uh, what's what's going to prevent us from going back into uh, default or to um, almost uh, non-use like some of the towns are? What's going to prevent that? Has that been part of the discussion? Um, I'm not sure. What, um, I We just got the report from the commissioners um, at the last meeting. Uh, that it's still up for discussion of what's going to happen, and they're still trying to look into all the different kinks with that. It's just like a future plan that they have that they want to implement. So, so if I if I may ask you, could you come back then in the future and give us the update? Yes. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Anyone else? Any other questions? Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Uh, good evening, Paul Mosteller, 83 Washington Street. Um, kind of discuss some old business, which is on your agenda tonight. H copiers. Um, maybe the town administrator can answer some of these questions, but uh, was that put out for bid? I understand Seacoast is a local business. Has the uh, has there been bids put out for the copiers? Be happy to answer if it's the board's wish. Okay. The, so the town has a standing contract with Seacoast Business Machines, which is one of the allowable items under the purchasing policy to continue the relationship. So this was not put out to bid, but is consistent with the purchasing policy. Okay, 347 per month. Is that per copier or one copier? That's total. Uh, how many copies per month? So it's a separate services contract. This is for the device itself. Um, Seacoast Business Machine structures their contracts. Um, we actually have like an umbrella contract for the town. Um, and we have overages that amount to a couple hundred dollars a year, um, and we try to make adjustments uh, to reflect that. So it's not per copier, if that makes sense. How long is the lease? The lease is five years. Can you explain a little bit about uh, the the blanket uh, using this contractor? Yeah, so it's called the non-appropriation clause. Is that what you mean? 
Yeah, is there a... Uh... So a non-appropriation clause is required by state statute for any uh, agreement that the select board makes over a year, um, and that's because the select board can't bind the town for more than a year. So a non-appropriation set clause says that in the event the town doesn't appropriate the funds to pay for this lease, the town has no penalties. The town doesn't lose anything, doesn't have to make a... Um, breach payment or anything like that. Is, is there a price allowance on less than five thousand? Is there is there a dollar amount on that? On the non appropriation clause? Yeah. The dollar amount is a dollar. The, there's no if we don't have the funds to pay for it, the non appropriation clause would kick in no matter what the amount is. We have a new board here that's selectmen. Have they do they understand that uh, the realm of the lease? I mean, if they're if the prior board had discussed this, now this is a new agenda. It, the, your agenda says 2020. Now we're 2022. It's a the, great point. Yeah. So this this select board, the five that are with us, well, they're not all with us tonight, but uh, we've done a couple of leases with non appropriation clauses and gone over them in detail on the regular agenda, not the consent agenda. But it's a good question. Uh, second question, uh, the polling pads. We have four of them. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Um, was that a grant? Did was it a line, budget line item? How, how do we? It was a budget line item. Okay, and was it presented to the board, the prior board? Yes. Presented. Um, has there been a uh, a third party penetration test on those pulling pads? Because are they connected to the internet wirelessly? No. So these devices are um, connected to each other, and that's it. And so that's so they can all maintain um, an updated checklist. And so something that's interesting in New Hampshire right now with the poll pads, and it's it's important to make the distinction, nothing about the actual voting process has changed at all. It's simply the registration process when you check in and state statute requires that there exist only one checklist, only one voting checklist. And so how that requires municipalities to handle an election is to break it up by section uh, we, Barrington has traditionally done it by alphabet and have one person. And the problem with that is the line for whatever your last name is, is always long when you get there and all the rest of them are empty. The poll pads, what they allow um, the staff to do, the election workers to do is any station can take any person and it's all updated concurrently. But the interesting thing about New Hampshire right now is New Hampshire hasn't, the Secretary of State's office hasn't authorized use of just the poll pads. The town has to maintain a still a physical checklist, just like we do before. But the difference is we have one staff member doing that, one election worker doing that, and the others are dispatched to the check-in stations. So they all talk to each other, and that's why um, the town's technology committee reviewed the white papers for the security of the devices, um, and it met their satisfaction. The town also clued in um, an outfit that we had a cybersecurity audit with, uh, la uh, last year, I think they ended at the beginning of 2021 it, um, to make sure. Is that report available? No, not publicly. So the the details of the poll pads and the cybersecurity audit are all not subject to release uh, under the right to know law, simply to protect the towns, uh, protect the town from vulnerability from any cybersecurity attack. So the select board and the technology committee is familiar with the details, uh, but those aren't details we make publicly available. Uh, ROI on the, the polling pads to the less people at the polling booths. Is there if so we paid for the poll pads the first year with a reduction in election worker wages. So if you look at the 2021 versus the 2022 uh, budget for election wages, the uh, reduction, uh, the amount that we reduced bought all the poll pads. So we'll continue to see savings. Yeah. I know my time's up. Yes, sir. Me, I have one thing to say, please. Uh, <clears throat> would you please, well, on that last question that Mr. Marcello asked, could you just discuss the training that was given to everybody prior to the use and everything else? Well, that would be helpful if you'd do that, please. So they had a, but prior to the election, the first election with the poll pads, all of the election workers were brought in for a special training from the company and representatives from um, the state to make sure they understood the system and how to use it. Okay. Last question. Rockledge, the 124 acres, was there a discussion on extending that one more year for them to do whatever they were going to do on that 124 acres? That conversation is still ongoing. No decisions have been made yet. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other public comment? Public comment. For anyone watching from home, you'll raise your hand. Oh, sorry. 
Grant, please. Uh, I'm Ken Grant. I live on Paca Mountain Road. I um, <clears throat> I I became aware of this uh, situation uh, with the uh, the Tolin Road, uh, and uh, I guess I'm concerned that uh, it would be getting to a point where there's just something that's going to trigger a special meeting when considering the cost. I, I feel I'd like to see uh, equal treatment uh, when there have been uh, planning board approval for things and zoning board approval for things. But but after that, the town, I think, has a duty to see that to make sure those those things don't uh, become a violation. And I specifically am pointing out this uh, horse ranch down on Beauty Hill Road. You go by there, you see a island created with earth or whatever that wood chips right in the middle of the wetlands with all these animals around and there's a several thousand square foot building that was generated there for for uh, uh, horse I, I believe mostly horses and stuff i i think that uh it has to be looked at that even though there's been approvals for this that there this is creating a certain uh a threat and and certainly most people today the first thing they jump on uh if it's uh, uh if it's not electric cars it's an environmental threat and uh so and i don't mean to cause that to, for the town to think that we need electric vehicles if they want to they buy them themselves but uh which is a waste but anyway uh, so i i'm for seeing this equal treatment uh and when it's uh, and it should be recognized that there's a there's a, a real serious problem that has potential of of being that threat, especially to the what the uh, uh, jurisdictional wetlands. And that's a, I, I don't know how that arena ever got to be approved in that location. It is uh, uh, Ed Beal's barn was not nearly that big, and and he certainly wasn't using it for horse, you know, uh, shoot livestock and stuff. But I would like to see even treatment. Uh, there are other cases too, where it just seems to go unnoticed when these violations are occurring. They certainly didn't go unnoticed when a uh, town employee wanted to come after me. And I, I spent several thousand dollars uh, after being in the same place for 18 years and being a self-employed contractor uh, for having a tractor parked there and a truck that, uh, that I, I did. It cost me several thousand dollars to get to, <laughs> to get my head right with the town, according to the town's vision of it. And uh, so here you have a number of instances where there should be equal and even-handed uh, treatment meted out when these violations are occurring. Okay. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chair. If, if I may, just in general. Um, and Mr. Grant, the just want to make sure you catch it in case you're interested. So the the select board's policy for code enforcement is by complaint, and that has its benefits and it has its drawbacks. Uh, one of the benefits is that the the town applies the zoning ordinance and code enforcement uh, very simply when a complaint is made. Complaints made, the town investigates. If the code enforcement officer feels that there's a violation, he pursues it. So the town doesn't go out looking for violations. And so that it might be that residents, especially in a specific neighborhood, might have concerns about something and wonder why the town isn't doing anything about it. And a lot of times the reason the town isn't doing anything about it is because somebody hasn't complained. So you mentioned a property specifically. If you're interested, I would encourage you to make a formal complaint so the building inspector code enforcement officer can look at that property specifically and come to a conclusion about potential violations. I think that position is by the citizen and taxpayers is well presented right here and it's on record. If, if you'd like it to be taken feel that way. Take, you feel free to take that as a, from Ken Grant, you know? Yes, sir, and, understood. Uh, it's funny that, uh, very quickly, it's funny that when I was, uh, when I had, had these issues created for me by a town employee, that just the hearsay to, the, to David Price of the Wetland Bureau issuing a letter uh, that I may have wetlands on my property. 
And I had to prove that I didn't. He didn't have to prove that there was. I had to prove that I was free of wetlands. And and that was part of the several thousand dollars it cost me to buy hire professionals. Uh, feel free and welcome to take the citizen's complaint right here tonight. Understood. Thank, Thank you, sir. On record, is it not? It is, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to make sure that was your intent. Any other comments? You're watching from home. We've gone over a little bit. If you want to comment, you can raise your hand, wait for recognition. If you're on telephone, it's star six, and we will recognize you. Don't see anything. I don't see anything electronically, Mr. Chair. Thank you. All right, moving on. Public hearing. The school board uh, representative is not here. I'll report later about school board meeting. Um, public hearing. Acceptance of state administered American Rescue Plan Act funds. Uh, local, locally, um, locality equipment purchase program. Everyone have, anyone have questions? Okay. Uh, then we could, if we could, is there any public comment on accepting these funds from the state? $50,000 support the purchase of AADs and a power cut. I see no public comment. We have a motion. I'll make a motion to accept. Mr. Gibson, move to accept the money. Can I have a second? I'll second it. Second. Sir. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Do we need separate separate yeah. motions for each yeah. one? All right. Uh, State Department of Justice, hundred thousand dollars support purchase and support of new laptop computers out of ARPA funds. Are there any comments? Any public comments? Don't see any electronically. Don't hear any on the phone. Mr. Bailey, I'd like to make a motion to accept and expend the uh, state administrated AARPA funds through the State Department of Justice in the amount of $100,000. Mr. Second. Gibson, second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. State Department of Health and Human Services, $160,000. Recreation Department applied for $160,000 support of a multi-passenger van in support of young adult programming. Are there any comments, questions? Sir. Yes, Mr. Bailey. I have a comment on this. I think it's a worthwhile thing. It's about time that uh, uh, we took a step forward here and included more people with our uh, rec programs. And I'm grateful for the uh, rec director for making sure that this uh, funds were applied for. And this one is still outstanding. We're waiting to hear an answer back. We're holding the hearings. The hearings have to be noticed in the paper um, in order to accept and expend any funds over $10,000. Um, and so the, just so you have that information. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Are there any other comments or questions? I don't see any electronically. Mr. Bailey. So I'd like to make a motion. Make a motion to accept and expend the state administered ARPA funds through the State Department of Health and Human Services in the amount of $160,000. Should we should we amend that to say uh, if approved by the state? That's okay. Yes. If approved by the state. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. All right, consent agenda <clears throat> as amended. Uh, motion to accept the consent agenda as amended. Okay. Second. Favor? Aye. Right. Okay, new request for signatures. That passed on the consent agenda. That, oh, that's right. That was C. Duh. Sorry, guys. <coughs> Duh. <clears throat> F and G and except for F. Okay. Appointments. I don't think there are any. 
No, sir. Okay. Staff reports. Mr. McIver. Thank you here. We're at the first meeting in June. I'd like to recognize the work anniversaries, those employees that were hired sometime uh, years ago in the month of June. Uh, starting with our longest serving employee, Timothy Booty, in the fire department for 27 years. Uh, Scott, Scott Young, currently a part-time police officer in the police department uh, for 24 years. Katie Perry, the police administrative assistant for 17 years. Monica Poitras in the recreation department for 12 years. John Huckins has uh, been building inspector code enforcement officer for nine years now. Eric Baker, currently a police sergeant, has worked in the town for five years. Jacob Cummings in the fire department for five years as well. Donald Morse, currently our canine officer, uh, has served in the town for four years. Tiffany Cottle, uh, municipal office administrator uh, for three years. Christopher Cook, the custodian in the library for two years. We hired our human resources administrator, Deborah Wood, one year ago this month. And Sam Janelle joined the fire department one year ago as well. So certainly appreciate the tenure of those employees and look forward to uh, more tenure in the future. And that's all I have, Mr. Chair, that isn't on the agenda. Thank you very much. And thank you to those employees for your good service. Ms. Cottle, do you have anything for us? I have a repurchase deed for map 126, lot 55, and um, the warrant for unlicensed dogs that was just approved. Thank you. We'll sign those. Thank you. Moving on to old business, crack ceiling award update. I think there is a letter in your packet. Uh, Mark Murrow explaining uh, concerns about the uh, crack ceiling. Uh, that we want to yeah. modify that. Uh, the motion that we made uh, it would appear that we don't quite need the, the contract. Any comments or questions? That's the, that's the one that failed to meet the standards? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I got to find it, but I know I read it. Okay. We certainly certainly apologize for the confusion, but this was uh, our first year uh, you know, doing crack sealing, and so uh, took a closer look at the details as we were uh, signing the documents, signing the documents, and noticed. So glad we caught it, uh, but please accept our apologies. Okay. How many, how many bids do you typically get? I mean, this is all new territory, but for crack sealing, are there many people doing it? Is there a lot of bids that come in? Or? It, it depends. It varies widely. The Honestly, the biggest challenge we're experiencing right now is so many contractors in every industry are so busy uh, that we're really having to fight to track down bids. Uh, on the consent agenda, we just approved spending $100,000 to buy police laptops and other items. And we ended up awarding that to a couple of different vendors because we couldn't get everything in one place. Um, and so uh, having some competition is is good. Uh, we'd always love to see more competition. We do everything we can to attract it, uh, but everybody's just so busy. I think one of the things with the crack ceiling that might have held us back a little bit too is simply the quantity um, where you know it has to be worthwhile for folks to come to town, do um, everything they need to and go out. So we we will learn, but um, it would always be good to see more competition. In this case, there were only two. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions? And we could entertain a motion to re redo this. I'll make a motion to accept the new contract. Okay. Uh, crack ceiling? Yeah, crack ceiling. Yeah, we'll rescind the, the previous award that we made at the last meeting. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay, Daniel Cater Road, gravel and vegetation discussion. Uh, again, in your pack, you've got a letter Mark Morrow to the uh, Conservation Commission and the Ayers Lake Association. Are there any questions about that? You know, I had I had a, a question. Um, not on no, not on his letter. It, oh the, yes, I did. The only thing I have on the letter is the uh, smaller uh, uh, crushed stone going to affect anybody's tires. I know it's an off the wall, but that's just a question I have. I don't think so, and it's being applied to other roads as well. Yeah, well, I I just happened to see it here, and I wanted to ask the question, so that was it. Thank you. 
I gotta find out where I put my I had notes on it. So yeah, I don't I don't know that definitively, but I think I, I think they're gonna use it on all gravel roads. So yes, I saw I read that also, but yeah, it, it's, this is the first time I guess I, I've seen it. Looks, and a half came up in front, so I want I just wanted to ask that question if it affects the tires or not. So that was it. Thank you. Yeah. Have we received any reply from either the Conservation Commission or the Air Flight Association? No, very tight turnaround, so I wouldn't have anticipated it. I just didn't think so. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Jim has his hand up. Yes, I'm sorry, Jim. I didn't. I got a question. I apologize. If we put down gravel now, what what is the yearly <coughs> it's going to look like on this since we've touched it once? Do do, do we know that? So to be to clarify, I don't think the road agent is planning to do anything um, beyond what the regular gravel road maintenance would be. It's just he's using a different material that he's expecting to have better results from in hardening the road. Um, so his hope is that using this material when it's necessary, not you know creating a problem, but when it's necessary, using this material will resu result in less work being required on the road. It won't need to be graded as much uh, the, because the material won't move around as much. Does that make sense? Sure. Okay. Yes. One question there is everybody's aware of, we have a warranty easement deed up on there and it's under uh, conservation easement. Putting the uh, stone in the front part of the uh, uh, road, that's partially there, that's partially under the easement. Does that put us in any... Uh, does it put us on the outs with the easement if we put it on the beginning of the part where the easement is there for them? I can tell you that the highway department will only be working within the town's right of way. Thank you very much. That's all I need to hear. Okay. Uh, Mr. Eric, you have a professional comment. It calls it sharp sand. It's it's no silt, um, jagged um, material that uh, he's going to use for uh, treatment, winter treatment, traction control in the winter, and also introduced to the gravel roads. Right. So that is commonly used in Bonstead, among other towns and stuff. And then you, it doesn't hurt cars and stuff. Right. You it yep. And then you have then you can grade it out in the spring. It's there's a half dozen towns in the area that use it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, because it, it's uh, three eighths clean stone chips. Right. That's what made me. Then, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That further defines outside of my expertise. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, all right. Moving on. New business regarding the noise ordinance. Okay, so I provided you all the details. Uh, essentially, the town passed a noise ordinance in 2001. The select board amended the noise ordinance in 2016 and 2017. Ultimately, the select board has no authority to amend an ordinance unless when that ordinance was passed, they gave the select board the authority to amend it, um, which makes the, two, the 2016 and 2017 amendments null and void for all intents and purposes. Truth be told, the ordinance as it's written now is pretty difficult for the police department to enforce anyways. I won't speak for the chief, but a lot of times in a situation where um, somebody calls in a violation of the noise ordinance, if any charges are brought up, it's typically not on the noise ordinance, it's um, something else. And so I think uh, we've got these lemons, I think making lemonade is appropriate. And so between now and the March 2023 election, um, what I'd propose, if the select board is interested, is uh, rewriting the noise ordinance uh, to con potentially integrate any of the 2016 or 2017 amendment, um, but also work with the police chief to make sure it's something that can be enforced and meets the current intent of the town. I will tell you that this topic, that this topic uh, comes up every year around this time because the noise ordinance um, provides a waiver, a blanket waiver from July 1st to July 6th for fireworks. And so, you know, July 2nd through July 7th, we'll get calls, hey, my neighbor's launching fireworks, isn't this against the noise ordinance? We inform them that it isn't. So there's always, um, around this time of year, uh, calls to amend the ordinance, uh, but it, it should be amended at a meeting. Please, Chief. So. We've had a lot of calls about this. This is a hot topic. It is every year, all year long for different reasons. Um, the, the requirements for the decibel levels are basically useless. Um, 
We may have a decibel reader somewhere at the police department. If we do, it's 20 years old. Well, actually, I'm sorry, it was amended in what, 2011? So a decade old, it's never been certified. Like any instrument that we need to enter into evidence, it would need to be certified on a regular basis. The decibel readings just don't make sense. As the TA referred, we actually fall back on the disorderly conduct statute and write it under the criminal code, which is much, much easier to enforce because essentially it says any noise heard from outside the property line, blah, blah, blah. Um, if I were to make a suggestion and going forward, if you're interested, there are several other communities that have very good noise ordinances with that style wording that we could certainly follow along with, which would put us in line with state statute and also be something that the courts have upheld year after year after year after year after year for these other communities. Yeah, when that was drawn up back when I was a youngster. The, the original one, I can tell you, is still on typewriter. <laughs> I, I think the amended one may have been done on computer, but I have the typewriter version in my cruiser bag still. Back then, there were some individuals who have since passed yes. that wanted to have uh, no fireworks at all on July, no fireworks allowed at all in the town, whatever. <laughs> I'm still fully in favor of, of the immediate variations that we give as a town. I think so. I just want to do away with the language that is essentially unenforceable. If we're, it, it's just like a policy. We shouldn't have a policy internally that we're not following. The same stands for our ordinances. If we can't and aren't enforcing our ordinance, we should take a serious look about making them fit the situation that we're in, is my opinion. I think it would be useful if you could present us with some of that language that might be and then we can bring that to deliberative session. Done. I'll get a couple different variations to report out. And if you'd like, I can combine them into one, but I'll get you some to look at. Absolutely. Yeah, one that you think you can enforce. I There's one I know for a fact I can enforce that has been done multiple times, and they're a CALEA accredited agency. So I would be happy to do so. <laughs> Thank you, Chief. Any other discussion? Any other questions? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to dismiss. Okay. Without objection, we'll get working on that. And um, I would also recommend that when we do bring that forward to the next select board meeting, maybe we hold a separate public hearing to invite input from residents. That'll give the chief and I and uh, Tiffany uh, something to tell folks when they call and have concerns about the ordinance that, hey, later this summer, we're going to hold a public hearing and review the noise ordinance language. If you're interested in providing input, uh, you're welcome. You're invited to that meeting. Do you need a motion for that? Consensus, I'm comfortable. Thank you. We need more firework days. Listen, that'll be hey, part of the conversation. Day, Labor Day. Well, they, they turn around and they you know, just Thanksgiving. Said, they just said those two were null and void. So <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> birthday. 30th wedding anniversaries. That was the last waiver I provided to the noise ordinance. Somebody's 30th wedding anniversary. By default, if you make it to 30 years, you get a waiver from okay. the noise ordinance. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, Barrington Municipal Parking. Uh, any questions? Any? Have you had a chance to go through this, Mr. Chair? If I may, just for the community's benefit, I trust that the select right. board has seen this, but I just want to give a quick overview. So the town um, down at the intersection of nine and one twenty-five, the there is a common misconception that the paved parking area that's on the north side of Route Nine, adjacent to where the village barn is, is municipal parking at park and ride that's how folks have used it for years it's actually private property it has been private property um, it sold in february of this year and continues to be private property um, the the misconception is grounded loosely in fact because the town does have municipal parking at that intersection but it's the gravel parking area which is adjacent to the elf made side of the kalos country store building and so that area is actually leased from the state it's part of the state's right of way um, the state's property actually goes right all the way up to the steps, of uh, those side entrance steps to the elf made portion of the Caleb's Country Store. And you can see a stone wall in the back, which continues down all the way to it's, it's wide to that extent, all the way to where the depot is. And so that's where the intended location for municipal parking was back in 1968. And so given the activity on the paved parking area, I think it's the right time um, for the town to invest a little bit in this municipal parking area, establish a little bit more, make sure residents know that this is where parking is in that area. And so uh, the road agent and I have had a chance to talk about it. He's gone out and looked at it. 
Uh, what we propose for the select board's consideration, don't need to make a decision tonight, but if you feel comfortable, you certainly can. I'd like to get some signs made up, simple municipal parking, make it clear that that's public parking and people are welcome to park there. Um, like to bring in some gravel and grade the property um, in collaboration with the state, uh, ease the transition onto the paved portion of Route 9 there. Uh, also clear out some of the vegetation uh, the only big tree we're thinking about taking out is that big dead tree that's right at the entrance. The rest is just small brush stuff that's overgrown, uh, but we'd like to get in there and clear that out um, and establish a little bit more of an open and clearly defined parking area. Uh, and that's really all right now. Um, there's not to say there might be calls in the future to do more um, for a parking area down there, um, The, uh, but that's all we're asking for right now. So happy to answer questions. If you feel you're prepared to make a decision, happy to entertain that as well. Did, did we get the state to give us some signs? Are there signs to indicate this park and ride? Uh, there are no signs. If we wanted signs, I'm proposing buying signs, um, but in conversation with the state because we'd have to still place them in there right away. With the, with the, <coughs> maybe after select board yeah, comment. Can you, can you wait? Yeah, My Talk question is what's going to happen right now with all the equipment and the trailers that are there? Well, there aren't. They're, they're on the they're across the street. They're not across the street. That's why I asked the question. I drove by there tonight. Oh, there's, really? there's a trailer and there's the other uh, four wheel machine. Uh, if the select board uh, were to authorize what we're proposing, the first step would be to get in touch with the property owners and tenants of that building and let them know what our plans are. Um, so I suspect that any issues uh, could be resolved then. OK, and then my, my next question is that if that is transpired we're going to be responsible for snow removal of salt and sand whatever is necessary to take care of that is that correct i would propose that would be the case thank you sir i'm all done thank you sorry to bother you no that's great <coughs> you have an idea on how far we're going to go you have the highlighted yellow here we're we going to go about halfway or it, are we just going to poke in a quarter of the way because I, I feel like if we're going to make a move <coughs> you know Make it worthwhile. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great question. We're really proposing to keep the scope pretty narrow right now. So if you're familiar the where the vegetation stops kind of at the end, it's overgrown on either side. It necks down quite a bit. We're really only proposing to go as far as the the vegetation stops and just widen it, uh, make it kind of full width, if you will, the whole way. We're not proposing to go any farther now. Um, we could certainly look into that, but I think uh, based on the scope that we're proposing, um, keeping it limited might be a good first step. I would just ask that you can get the the board a, you know, kind of like what you have here with the picture, but with the area that you were talking about clearing so everybody can see it because some people, you know, are good hands on, but some might want to see it from here. Absolutely. I, I have a concern, Mr. Chairman, that uh, uh, the I don't know who bought the property across the street, and I don't want to know. But whoever bought the property across the street can, in fact, stop the uh, park and ride yeah. at that piece. And if so. they stop the park and ride piece, going along with what Jim just said about how much we're going to have here, how many cars are they? Usually see what seven, eight, nine cars at times for the park and ride. Usually it. That's from me driving by and seeing them. And so it, are we planning on those seven or eight, nine cars being across the street? And then also for uh, customer parking, are we required to pay to have customer parking for uh, the store? Because of because, you know, in the past we used to. So that that's it, you know, so and then the uh, part of the snowmobile trail comes that way also. Yep. So and it goes across the street. So. So the way that the across the street is done now, and I don't want to know who the owner is, he's blocked off the trail. So did he cancel the trail? No, the trail is actually going on the right-hand side of the, the two old barn buildings. And, and so the, the trails committee, not the trails committee, but the people that do the trails would have to clear, clear that up a little bit. So they can, yeah, okay. I, I think it's already All right, that, so that, that's, what my, that's what my concerns are. That, that are there and also the other concern is if we have the parking too close to the building how's it going to affect fire chief and his crew 
You want to? I, I, yeah, I'll answer a couple of your questions, and then Fire Chief has something he wants to say. So first, the I don't know the number of spaces, but our intent would be to make sure that there's enough room for people that had used the parking lot across the street to be able to use that one. All right. The use of this area isn't changing. People park there now. To your question about do we have a responsibility to provide business parking, we absolutely do not. Okay. The, the only, what I would say is the stated goal of this area is to make public parking available in the vicinity of Route 9 and 125, whether it's a park and ride for people carpooling or commuting, whether it's people parking there to patronize the businesses. My personal opinion is that that doesn't matter to the town, but making it available is what matters. Well, um, I ask those questions and further use to just to make it on the record is exactly what we're trying to do with it and what it's for. Understood. I wasn't trying to be that other three letter word, but uh, I, I did a good job of it. So that's how <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Walker. You left, Mr. Walker, please. I, I'm <clears throat> just to help clarify some of Slugman Bailey's questions, I'll give you a little back history of that property. For a number of years, the park and ride signs were in that parking lot, paved parking lot across the street. That property has been always been privately owned, and signs were placed there erroneously by the state of New Hampshire. When the Hortons sold. Kalos Country Store, they retained that piece of property. And Mrs. Horton was advised by her attorney that you need to close that parking lot. Don't leave that open. It's not, it's private property. It's not a parking lot. So she advised the state, the state removed the signs ad advertising it as a parking ride. And basically what she did was shut the parking lot off to limit liability to her as she didn't necessarily tell people they couldn't park there. She just didn't advertise the fact that it, people could park there. So that's really the back history behind that, that the park and ride signs erroneously, whatever number of years ago, were, were erroneously put on the wrong piece of property by the state of New Hampshire, and they were removed at the request of the current property owner, or previous, I should say. Going along with what Jim said, I'm going to blame you, is that if we have a smaller area, where is the off uh, parking going to be for uh, the store? I mean, if, if just suppose that's shut off, now are we going to have to go back a second time and make that, that parking lot bigger to accommodate? I know we're not worried about the parking, but so what happens? Everybody gets ticketed and now we become the, that three-letter word again? No, I don't. Uh, I, Where are you concerned people will be ticketed? If if they turn around and they fill up the, the, the three parking areas that are on that side of the road with Caleb, so they start parking either in the road or uh, up against the uh, grass down further, you know, I would have a problem with that because the, gentleman, the person that owns the uh, piece across the street they shut it off. This, you know, <clears throat> anyway, that that's how I feel about it. I just don't think that, uh, you know, we're, yeah. doing, we're making this big enough. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Rick. Well, since we're that's on it. this, Mr. Ayer has. That's real quick. You can utilize the parking street right up the street at the old school. We know we spend the tax base. Mm -hmm. There's fuel, fuel that people can locate there. There'll be no problem to anyone. It won't cause future problems. It's already ready to go right now. As a designation, all you have to do is designate it as an area. I don't think we're ready to make a motion. We're not ready to make a motion. That's okay. I'll get a more defined um, locale for what will be upgraded um, yeah, or specific see, scope. See what we're going to do. So we get an uh, exact yeah. scope and perhaps consider upper funds yeah. for project funds. Sure. Could be, honestly, we don't expect it's going to cost that much. We'll probably have to hire somebody to take that big tree down and it'll be material, but we'll do it all in house. Um, and so I, I hope it wouldn't even cost that much. Yeah, if, if the board were to decide to make it bigger. Oh, we right. Can, we can do that, might be a good use. Absolutely. Okay. I will bring more information back at our next. Yeah, Thank you. It'll be useful to see what the usage is and we can revision, revise it, review it again once we find out what the actual usage. Of that area right so we're going to do nothing until the next meeting we'll bring back more information okay great reference uh okay any other questions about municipal park library um when 
road agent, we were asked to clear the snow in, in the sidewalk in front of the of the library, to the library. We don't have the equipment to do that. And Mr. Morrow made an effort, but he there are various complaints from the library putting snow in places they didn't want it. Now we've damaged the uh, damaged the bench. They want us to pay for it. It's their their bench. We thought they should pay for it. Uh, yeah, I, I propose to stay out. The incident's on to keep it up, but I, that was just a proposal. My my idea on this, I know I took it off the agenda. Sure. Um, you know the the library they don't, they don't pay for plowing, um, and they're they're not even supposed to do that portion because it's a walkway. I mean, and Mark trying to do his due diligence, going, hey. How can we help out? Um, and you know, if it's two o'clock in the morning, snow and hailing, and you know, something accidental happens, I think all the years that we've been doing it, showing good faith and trying to help out and be the better person, I do believe there's enough funds in the library that you know, if they need a hundred dollars for a bench, it can come out of their fund. Um, also, because the library hasn't been easy um, doing their updates, you know, with the patio and whatnot, and not talking to our you know highway department being like hey where do you guys put snow you know if we put a patio here is this gonna put a put a you know a, a kink in the belt and i don't know i just don't think it should come out of the incident fund i think the highway department does a great job and you know it's just it's not you know it would be like helping out a neighbor and you know at uh you know you broke a shovel and now he's going to go, hey, you owe me a shovel. I, I don't think that's a, a good atmosphere to, to have amongst the departments. And that's why I wanted to bring it up, talk about it. That's a good point. Uh, it also suggested that probably, obviously, we don't have the equipment to do that. So uh, they, they have a custodian. They have people that can do this yeah. uh, in the future, future snow events. Become their responsibility. As it should have been all along. Okay. Where the money comes from, it all comes from the taxpayers' pockets. Um, yeah, no, well, it's, I, I appreciate. They, they also got you know twenty thousand last year from the town. Okay. Um, you know, I just see it's there, and you know, why why punish? Or not that he's really getting punished, but you know, why why would you fault somebody for for trying to do good and then be like, oh, now yell me? That's just not. Not good practice in my book. Right. I understand you. The other issue I have with that also is that uh, I personally don't like where they put the shed because it covers up the uh, handicap uh, parking space. Not only am I worried about myself, but I'm worried about other individuals sure. in town that come and do that. Uh, I don't know uh, how Mark uh, worked it out with them or if it was worked out with them to uh, put that there, but uh, you know, we might want to look into that at the same time and discuss moving it back or sideways or what have you. Let's go back to the plowing. In the years, in the, in the past, I don't recall the bench being that close to the walkway. So, I mean, if you put the bench that close to the walkway, you should accept the responsibility of paying for it. I don't think that we, the select board, should be paying for the bench. If we knock over a lot of these mailboxes, this, you know, if they're within that 18 inches from the side of the road, then, then it's not that it was illegally put. So that's not the subject I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is that bench. So I, I, I could not, in all consciousness, ask the town to pay for the bench. So I hear what Mr. Mr. Gibson is saying. I, I agree with you. I think, though, that you know, what kind of precedent are we starting? Because you know, accidents happen and there's no finger pointing, there's no blame, it's all town money. And so if, you know, the, the plow hits something on the new town hall or school or any, anywhere, the town would repair it or help out and just what we would do. So it just seems like accidents happen. I, I, I don't have an issue with trying to help them out with a broken fetch. I mean, from an incident fund, which is, goes towards unexpected events. 
Yeah, I think this, you know, just to echo what George said, it sets a precedence being like, okay, if we damage a mailbox, now we're going to get out there and buy mailboxes. You, you know what I mean? And, and that's what it sets. And because we know winter is coming, right? Okay, what does everybody do in New England? We get ready for winter, whether it's bringing in wood, putting up our stakes, our markers. If you have something close to the pavement, you don't want to get hit and or you move it. You know, there's bike racks in the way, the sheds in the way. You know, I, I think there there needs to be a discussion with the library and the highway department, and maybe they can come together on, hey, you know, what, prep for winter. This is what you know. This is the best case scenario because we're we're trying to work together with departments, not point the finger at it and, oh well, it's you know we've got a fund for it, so let's just do it. No, it's you know it's setting a precedence, going okay. You know, if we broke this and we owe Joe Blow down the street, we owe him a mailbox because, you know, that got bad. Or somebody else drove by with a plow and hit it, and it wasn't even one of our guys, and we still got to replace it. That's that's my feeling. I know it's hundred bucks, but I thought it was pretty petty coming up to this because I. Oh, and I, 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 you know, I agree with you on that, but I think that as a town, things will break, and accidents will happen, and we do pay for this. Uh, so. Right, and I'm sure if we hit the side of a building with a plow, I'm sure that would go through insurance, not over a hundred dollars. I mean, if we if we broke the the Golden Goose uh, bench that was handmade, and you know it, it was a twenty thousand dollar bench, uh, yeah, you know it, it, may, it might be a different story, but I'm sure it also wouldn't be placed so close to you know at, uh, with a part of uh, equipment could get to it. Library trustee had it turned out. Would be alright to have her play. I have, I have no comments. Susan, if you'll come off of if you'll come off of mute, be happy to hear you. Hi, this is uh, Susan Gaudiello. Do you call on me? Yes, please. Okay. Um, well, first of all, I would ask uh, Mr. Mantrick, were you able to share the email I sent you with the rest of the board? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I just wanted to make sure that everybody had information. And I'm, I am new to the trustee board since March. Of uh, course, I had a meteor rise into the chair seat the moment I was appointed. Um, so I can't speak to some of the history, but um, just as a little bit of history, there is a memorandum of understanding between the town and the library. It looks like it was last uh, executed in uh, 2011. And it's a document we probably would all be well served to review and uh, make some revisions. It does indicate in that MOU that the library is apparently responsible for snow removal. Um, at what point the Public Works Department took that on, I really don't know. Um, so I can't speak to that. And some of you, I think, are making comments. And again, I don't have the information. I don't know if Melissa's on the, on the uh, line as well, whether she is able to add to that. But whether the, the um, uh, bench was too close to the walkway, where it was positioned, that sort of thing, that's information we don't have. The concern that I expressed to you um, was Yes, it's all taxpayer money that ultimately is being used, but the, the library budget is distinctly different. It's, uh, not, it's not line item switching between various departments within the town. It's a separate budget. And our budget is, as you know, very slim, uh, most of it being consumed by, by staff. So there's not, the budgets are so different between these departments, it's hard to equate. $100 is not much um, to most departments, to us, to the library, it still is a meaningful amount of money for programming and materials and so on. So that is one of the reasons we felt it was worth pursuing this. Melissa had told me when she um, discovered the bench problem, and I guess she spoke with the road agent, he acknowledged that he was the one who had damaged it. And I, my understanding from Melissa was their agreement between the two of them that, that he would make good on that. Um, and then things have changed since then. So I, I don't think this is the same as a mailbox and a public right of way. That, you know, I know when I was on the select board, there were always people who came and complained that their mailboxes got taken out by the plow. 
And we had to deal with that, but we didn't replace people's mailboxes. Um, so I guess I, I do want to say I think that's different. I'm concerned about the discussion relative to the shed. And again, that was put in place before I was on the board. But my understanding is that the library discussed that with, I thought, the board and the town administrator as to the placement of that, um, that building. Uh, and obviously, it's an effort to deal with lack of space in the library to the extent that we could not cannot hold programs we can't hold the do anything in the small meeting room unless we had a place for storage and obviously you know we're limited on space there uh, i guess i want to stop at, at that point. it looks like others have something they want to comment on mr scotia had a question so it, since say it's since 2011 since the highway department has been removing snow from the library i do not I mean, know that to be no. true i don't think it's that long because 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 well even if it was over a year or two years think about how many thousands of dollars that saved the library so you know whether or not they were asked to do it it doesn't you know I, i'm not hearing a complaint being like hey you know we had another contractor lined up they were supposed to come in and do it, uh, but Mark got to it first. You, you know what I mean? It wasn't like Mark was stepping on toes. He was trying to do the right thing and, you know, I try and include it in because, you know, that's going to save the library a bunch of money. But um, and it has over the last year or so. Uh, I'm sure he's been doing it for three or four years. My understanding is what used to happen um, was the, the uh, custodian did the snow removal. I don't know if the walkway was smaller. We've had turnover in that position. So uh, it was, uh, I think somewhere along the way it fell off. I don't know how that happened. And I don't know if Melissa knows when it shifted from something that the, the um, library was taking care of, not that they hired somebody to do it, but that they were taking care of it within the budget. And when the, the, um, Public Works Department took that over. I don't know that history. It would be worth finding out. Um, one and and just on that issue, um, Melissa and I have talked further about that, and it is in in the agreement. Unless we change that agreement, we will need to look at either um, uh, purchasing a snowblower and how to store that, or hiring a third party contractor. Which personally, I think is maybe a better idea. I worry about. Um, a, a custodian doing heavy shoveling. I don't think that's um, the best, you know, best use of their skills. I would worry about workers' comp claims, quite honestly, because um, it's a pretty big walkway. But that's sort of going forward. We need to look at how we're going to take care of that going forward. Um, so my, obviously, I felt that, yes, we could replace the bench. Um, and one of the things that's challenging for the library is we use a lot of volunteer effort and a lot of volunteer dollars. And it seems a shame to have to use those dollars to replace something that was damaged by another department. And not, and again, we appreciate that the effort of the highway department was to clear the walk and to provide access to the library. And we appreciate that. Yeah, but they've done that for, for at least a couple of years now. And now we're gonna we're gonna demand money out of them. I just don't see that that's great practice. But you have your opinion, and I have mine. Is Melissa out there in the cyberspace? I do not see her on the meeting electronically. Uh, whoever S is was was blinking. That's, that was that's Susan. Susan. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Now I see it. Thank you, Susan. Appreciate it. Appreciate your comment too. Okay. Um, so we come down to this. We want to make a motion to pay for it out of the instant fund or not comment at all. I'd like to make a motion not to pay for this out of the incident fund and have the library pay for it themselves. Uh, our, our rules prohibit us from making negative motions. How is that negative? But well, is the negative word, sir. It's just it's, it's just our rules that we have for, on the board. We all have to have well, rules. Well, how, so, how, so how, so how, how can we word that? Okay, what I'm going to say to you is if you turned around and made a motion to pay it, then you'd have to get a second. Okay. 
and, and if he, then they has to have a vote. So the vote can be no by everyone that's there, or yes, two to two, whatever, whatever it's going to be. But you won't be making a negative motion. Select yeah. our, our select select okay. board rules say yeah, that. Yeah. So, so you understand what I'm saying, Mr. Chair? I, I give it. Thank you. you. I know you do. I yeah. know. Just. But I have to cover myself too by going to him. Yep, he's you could, the boss. If you chose, you could make your motion that the library, the, the library pay for their own. Yeah, I make the motion that the library pay for their damaged bench. We have a second. Second. Bailey, second. Any other discussion? Vote. All in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. All. Opposed? Aye. Aye. Okay. So, a tie. so it does not pass. That's right. So we're just. But absent another motion, this decision still hasn't been made, so nothing will happen. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll wait till we got it. So this has to go. Would you like to make another motion? Is there a motion that the nay voters would like to propose that they like better? Okay, I'll, I'll, no. I'll propose a motion that I suggest. I propose that they uh, use $100 from the incident fund to repair the, repair the bench. Well, I have a second that. Seconding. All right. We've had enough discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. No. Okay. Still have a <laughs> You might, yes, sir. Uh, resident Doug Winter, 54 Frost Hill Lane. Could you come up here so other people, so the people? I, mean, I want to say what you should do. Maybe you could just compromise and go 50 50. Somebody make a motion to do that. Get three people to say yes. Just, that's all. Yeah. Slow again. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Close enough. That's Thank it. you. I don't have any cigars. So we could bring it forward at the next meeting when we have five members and. Maybe that would be the. Yeah. There we go. There That's you go. I know what's going to happen to five members, so we just just do it. Yeah, okay, go ahead. We're everyone's commenting. Okay, uh, your your vote shouldn't be taken the wrong way by anybody that wants to write a check right here tonight <laughs> and pay for it out of their own right. fund. So you so I I understand. That you say no. I might agree with it, but that doesn't prevent me if I want to write a check and put it right in there. I can. Exactly. Correct. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. We'll bring it up some other time. We'll bring it up the next meeting. Okay. Uh, the other new uh, was concerning the June 27th meeting. So historically, the select board has uh, gone to one meeting a month through the summer months. Um, the we kind of waited to see what was going on to make sure that that wouldn't interrupt any planned activities. Uh, as it stands right now, I don't have anything on the agenda for the June 27th meeting. Um, so I would propose that I uh, talked with Chair Mantrek um, and uh, we would propose um, the select board's consideration for canceling that meeting. Um, that said, there might be uh, decisions that the select board should make relative to the petition calling for a special meeting. Uh, the select board could handle that in a few different ways. Uh, absent meeting again on the 27th. First, the select board could delegate to the chair um, to work with staff and identify dates. Uh, that will really be the, the, the bulk of any discussion and decision making. Or the select board uh, could set a, um, the, discuss the scheduling of anything um, through email communication without violating the right to know law since scheduling and logistics is an allowable uh, use of communication outside of a meeting. Um, and so those are the, uh, the. The points happy to answer any questions. Sure. I am asking the question, Mr. Chairman. So if if we were to do this, we would say that uh, uh, we would have uh, we would cancel uh, one meeting. In June and then in July, we would pick either the 11th or the 25th or the 8th or the 22nd. 
Well, Mr. Bailey, the 25th of July is already kind of a non-business meeting because that's our strategic planning session. Well, no, I'm just I'm just asking if, if a motion would be made that we cancel the meeting on the 27th, the 25th, and the 22nd. I would only propose, you're welcome to make whatever motion you'd like. I would only propose to cancel the meeting on the 27th of June. I would leave the rest of the meetings. And if we wanted to make a future decision, we could once we saw what business needed to be conducted by the town. Well, that, that's I'm, glad, I'm glad I didn't make a motion. I'd be disappointed. We're going to need to take care of that on the 27th or no? Well, we were. Well, that was the question. Tonight. So essentially what the town will have to do, that'll be submitted to the supervisors of the checklist to verify uh, signatures and addresses, make sure folks are registered voters. Then it'll be turned back over to the select board. Uh, the first step is the select board will have to schedule a deliberative session and a voting session. Um, generally, that would be something that staff would kind of take the lead on. It wouldn't necessarily, the staff being the town clerk and the moderator and the supervisor of the checklist, all the folks that will have to put these meetings together and coordinate them. And so it could be that our at our July uh, meeting, the um, staff make a presentation and present the decisions that were made if the board authorizes the chair to you know sign off on date selections as recommended by staff so we can go either way and there are statutory limits to how soon it can happen anyways um, because folks have to have an opportunity uh, to come in and register to vote if they're not already registered um, it has to be noticed a certain amount of time in advance and there has to be a certain amount of time in between the deliberative session portion and the ballot voting session portion i just didn't know where he was so hot to trot tonight to say i want to be on the next board meeting and then we're canceling one i don't want it to look like we're canceling it because of him you know what i mean and I, might be taken that way, but I just wanted to make sure that we're good on that. That note. Oh. I know I've recused myself from everything, but I just want to make sure that it's a hundred percent transparent out there, so it can't be twisted. That's something to think about, gentlemen. Yeah. So, um, we want to cancel that meeting. Basically, the no, question I, and I, I, how do we want to? Be prepared to handle when this. Once we get the word from the supervisor of the checklist, then we need to need to make a set of time for the deliberative session. Because do we know how long that process takes? Because if we're going to talk it about now, or if we're going to wait, you know, till next week or something, and then talk about it, then have it. You know what I mean? So. We could, again, the scheduling we can do administratively, okay. legally. It's your ship, brother. Yeah. Well, need to, need the concurrence of the whole whole board to do it that way. Yep. I'm fine with uh, logistically scheduling via email. Okay. So, so we the motion the motion we should have a motion to uh, cancel the. June 27th meeting, which was already on the agenda. That wasn't something right. that came up just in the last few minutes. Correct. No prejudice being shown. Yeah. Nope, but as long as we have it out there, it's out there. You know, I right. just want to make sure it's clear. So we need a motion to do that. And then uh, again, I don't think we need a motion to do the administrative part of it. Okay. So. Motion to cancel the as planned or discussed the, the June uh, 27th meeting. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, select board reports. Capital isn't here. Mr. Gibson. Uh, town lands will meet this Saturday. They did not have a meeting in May. Uh, May 26th, uh, the Conservation Commission met and um, they're doing a lot of work on the trails uh, tracker program uh, jack gale tracker program uh, jack gale's put a lot into um, this exciting program i don't know how much okay right so i don't want to like uh, that's a secret or a surprise 
Um, but they're doing a lot of great stuff on the uh, Trails Committee uh, Conservation to get people to use the trails and uh, some exciting programs uh, coming up. And uh, so keep your eyes out for that. Rec Department, they got summer camps, um, obviously pushing towards their goals for the uh, billion they want to do and their rec crews doing their thing. Very good. Mr. Bailey. I was uh, not available to do uh, the CBA or the uh, library due to illness. I have nothing to report. Sir. Sure. Uh, school board had their last meeting of the school year. Uh, they had a champion of children's award, Kelly Doucette, recognition New Hampshire Education Excellence Award to Doris Barnes Retired Teacher Lifetime Achievement Award to Pam Lindsay. And Barrington School Foundation Teacher of the Year, Jeff Durrell. Uh, should congratulate them. Yes, uh, I think. Uh, yes, Mr. Bailey. At the next meeting, would you ask, uh, not just for me, but for the board, notice that on the news lately, no matter what, what you listen to, uh, there has been talk about uh, school safety. And I want to know has this school board or the past school boards? Uh, used up all of the money available to them, or do they have a balance in their fund that the federal government gave for safety for the schools? I hope you can understand what I'm asking. You know, if we have to do more, we should be able to do it. The next school board meeting will be toward the end of July, so that'll be uh, fine. Yeah, uh, and I know that there's been conversation in the school board and uh, our police department. Security. Well, I'm not going to. I'm not asking for any details. I'm just asking for the balance. I, I know how it, it affects everybody. Thank you. Thank you. I'll put that down. Do we know if they're going to be implementing any of the training that the PD has available? I don't know the answer to that. Okay. That was not addressed at, at the meeting. I don't know the answer to it. Uh, there, there's training available. Out there. Yes. Uh, federal money for that. Uh, the uh, transfer station. Uh, meeting I missed, but uh, according according to the notes and the conversation, uh, I would like, and if we talked about on the consent agenda concerning uh, user fees, uh, because we're making uh, something like thirteen hundred dollars uh, from the from the metal uh, for this new contract, and also the um, they want the. Transfer station closed the 23rd, the afternoon, the 23rd of July, same time as the parade. I think. Two, hour, two hours before the parade starts. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. And that's about, about it for public. Okay. Do, we, do you need a motion to allow them to close or do we just have a consent agenda? I think we did that on the consent agenda. Now, both those items are on the consent agenda. Thank you very yeah. much. Yes, sir. Yeah, I just raised um, Public comment. Uh, now, time for another public comment. Again, you uh, see a total of 15 minutes. You have uh, each person has three minutes to make their presentation. Again, if you give your name and address, Mr. Bailey. Just Thank you very much. I have a public comment to talk about the uh, police department. As most of you know where I live, and I must say that uh, it's been very enjoyable sitting on my back porch when that police car was up on 125 because you could just hear the slow traffic coming and everything else. And then when that police car is not there, you can, you can hear the motorcycles is mainly what I'm talking about, drive up real slow. And then when they reach my street and there's not that shadow in the parking lot, boy, you can hear them crank it on and down they go. So I just want to thank them for the days of privacy that I had. I appreciate that. Thank you very much, Chief. George, did they sound good? Were they good? Oh, they were. They were right. There was only one. There was only one person that was out of tune. It kept coming. Yep. The rest of them were perfect. Was just down there. Uh, <laughs> I don't know that much. Uh, Paul Mosteller again, 83 Washington Street. Uh, can the town administrator give us an update on the town hall? They're going to meet the deadlines. And the appropriation of 815,000 coming back to the town because of the federal grant. Am I correct on that? Not entirely. So the first question about deadlines, we're still on track. We're still scheduled to move the week of July 25th. 
Um, in the construction world, anything can happen, but we're checking all the boxes as we move on. The team's been doing a great job. To your question about the appropriation, so that will simply be bonding authority that I don't expect the town will execute on. So the Warren article to approve the new town hall was $1,025,000 into a capital reserve from unassigned fund balance. That money will be spent. The uh, second portion of that was to authorize the issuance of a bond in the amount of $875,000. And given the $1.5 million of direct federal funding, uh, my expectation is that the town will simply not uh, issue that bond for the $875,000, let that lapse. And so there won't be, it's not like there'll be extra $875,000. Um, and that money couldn't be used for anything else anyways because it was appropriated specifically for the town hall. So the, you know, it's not like we could, the select board could say, well, let's issue that bond and use another $800,000 on paving uh, because it's voters that authorize the issuance of a bond. It was for the town hall. Fortunately, because the $1.5 million grant doesn't look like we're going to need the money. And so uh, it will just lapse. Between now and uh, ribbon cutting, Change orders, material costs. Does that run in front of the board at all, or is that uh, is there an allowance? It's all design build, so the total cost right now um, is about two point five million dollars, um, and that's um, the that is on budget with what the update for, you know presented once construction actually started uh, with increased material costs and everything like that. So there were allowances to to cover. Um, the unexpected winter conditions and other, um, I don't say issues, but you know, challenges any construction project faces. Uh, did the state sign off on the road coming in from 125? So I believe your question is, is the larger development, did they receive their DOT permit? They did. Thank you. Any other public comment? Jack Gale, 798 Berry River Road. Um, just a comment on what the town administrator said earlier. It wasn't just quoting of a rule or a law. Um, the town government puts processes in place so we can make things happen. I was the part of the administration of a, a landowners association in the community here in town. We had people violating the rules, parking cars in our land such that the UPS guy had to do a 23 point turn to get off of a dead end road. We had someone parking cars on a lot in violation of the rules about having unregistered vehicles. In worst case, we had a landowner who decided to set up a commercial campground on his lot. And we found uh, campfires with no ability to put the fire out, um, constantly running uh, generators because there was no power provided to the site. And later hikers found human excrement and waste on the land because he provided no facilities of any kind for his campers. Um, the proper forms were drafted by, sorry, by myself and another. We provided pictures, quoted state laws, all available on the machines that we have in front of us, submitted them. Um, all three were rectified because we followed the rules. I would caution anyone that says they can just talk to anybody in the town and, and get something taken care of. I had a discussion with the selectman this weekend. I didn't ask him to do that. There's a process. I would, wouldn't want a government where something you learned at the diner or at history day this weekend all of a sudden becomes action by town officials. We can document these and do them the proper way. The political process would not be a way to do it. Thank you. Any other comments from those present? I can't see underneath. Very good. Um, I don't see any one online. If you're online, you'll raise your hand. We can recognize you. If you're on telephone, post star six. You can recognize you and hear your comments. Oh, sorry. Mr. Walker's here. Apologize. Go ahead if there's somebody else had me. I apologize. I didn't, didn't see you come. Um, as part of the tricentennial committee, I just want to bring the folks up to date and the people that might be listening out in the audience. Um, very successful history day that we took part in with the uh, Historical Society on Saturday. Um, we uh, 
we were kind of responsible for uh, the chicken barbecue. Um, uh, there were some disappointed people that left there without chicken because um, it we greatly overestimated, uh, underestimated the demand for the chicken. And, uh, you know, that, that has a lot to do with the weather. We had to throw a dot at the wall and say, this is how much we're going to get, but, um, and hope that we sell it all. Uh, thankfully, we did sell it all, uh, which is a whole lot better than standing there 50 or 60 plates in your hand of chicken and having nothing to do with it. But um, that very successful day was successful for the Historical Society, it was successful for the committee. We were able to get a lot of information out to people, and I think the uh, very, very, very huge turnout. They had, they uh, they put they put on an excellent program and kudos to the uh, Historical Society for being the main driving force behind that. Um, our next uh, big thing for us is the parade. Um, we have a commitment right now of over 60 entries. It's going to be a huge parade. We're uh, we're pretty excited about it. Um, that I I hope we don't double the population of Barrington for two or three hours. That that that. Um, but but any rate, uh, looking forward to that. Um, we have a number of static displays set up, uh, including uh, in a uh, mil, uh, civil uh, 1700. 1700 uh, Civil War encampment um, uh, that will be going on through the weekend. Uh, we currently have, uh, as long as the weather is good, we have a military hop helicopter coming in that will be a kind of a touch of uh, truck um, or touch of vehicle, I should say, a, me a medical helicopter coming in from DART. Um, we have a replica of um, I don't remember the show emergency because it predates my age, but there was a show called emergency uh, squad 51. There's a gentleman up in Maine that <coughs> recreated that truck that will be on display that day. So it's kind of old, old, old style EMS versus the, the newer uh, mil the, the newer uh, helicopter. Um, and there's a, there's a number of other things and that really is going to kick off what is our big week uh, from uh, July 23rd to uh, final uh, follow up with a, a super duper display over on Smoke Street um, uh, behind the highway garage on uh, July 30th. So uh, we're really excited for it. We're looking looking forward to it. It's going to be a big time. And uh, uh, we, we hope that uh, people are uh, enjoying this. Uh, 300th year. Oh, please, Chief, Mr. Bailey, before you, yeah, before you leave. Please. Chief, uh, first question is, what's the route? The route is going to, uh, so part of the parade will start up on Ramsdale Lane and work their way down to uh, Redemption Road, uh, where uh, most of the marching units and the, the walking units and stuff will be lined up at Turbo Cam. They'll come up to a stop there. That group will come out of Turbo Cam, go down Route 9, to um, Malago Road, turn on turn on the Malago Road and into the back entrance of the elementary school where they'll disband from there. Okay. Uh, next question concerns parking and yeah, where parking is. And people going to be able to be bus for that parking, or do they have to plan on walking from the area we, to, to get on um, the freight route? These so, are questions that were asked to me, and I couldn't. Yeah, answer. So um, we're we're currently that's currently our big project right now is looking at parking. Um, the cemetery trustees have graciously agreed to allow parking uh, in the in the field behind the historical society. Uh, we anticipate um, uh, I'm around five or six hundred cars park there, uh, and then we've identified a couple other spots. Uh, but obviously, um, off-site parking. Um, there'll be some sort of a shuttle to get people back and forth. We're obviously going to, as we get closer to this, to encourage people to uh, carpool as much as possible and, and limit the number of vehicles that are that we got to try to find parking for. The question to you is, has your, your committee turned around and contacted the two churches to see if they could use their parking lots? That That's on the list, and actually we're haven't ruled out the fact that we would get all three churches, not all four churches. 
Okay. All right. Thank you for your help. Are you repelling out of either helicopter? I get thrown out of one, but I don't know if I'm going to be repelling, but I may get thrown. If they need a helping hand. Yeah, you <laughs> uh, our recreation director, Jessica Tennis, has her hand up. Oh, Jessica, please. Um, I just wanted to just quickly provide an update on the town playground. Um, there was a little bit of a delay in the in the installation of the shade structures. However, they are slated to be installed tomorrow. Um, we have the fence being reinstalled on Thursday, so our plan is to reopen that the uh, the playground area on Friday of this week. So I just wanted to just uh, provide an update for the select board as well as the community. Thank you. Any other comment? Thank you, Jessica. Anyone else online? Again, those on telephone, star six. I don't see any other comments. I do not. Okay, sir. Um, I do think we need to have non-public session. So. Just gonna close public comment, right? Yeah, I'm sorry. Closed. Okay. Thank I'll, you. I'll make a motion to go into non-public. Second. For the purposes of personnel. Yeah. Uh, Second. I, I'm gonna say 91-8 colon three area or Roman two. Purpose of personnel. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye.
second. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Mr. Scotia, you have public. Oh, wait, we have to open up public. We're back in public. Okay. I need a motion to appropriate $70,000 out of the ARPA fund for police retention bonuses to be administered by police chief and the town administrator. Second. Been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion is passed. Entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Without Aye. objection is so ordered.